Hey friends, I put up a video recently suggesting that it was a sin to have Sunday as the main worshipping day. After the avalanche of questions and observations I have received, I thought it would be productive to have a Q&A session to address your top 3 concerns from the perspective of a Seventh-day Adventist. If you missed my previous video and you want to catch up on all the fun, I have left the link in the description for you. Ok, let's dive in! Is Lord's Day Sunday? Revelation 1.10 states, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Many of the questions and challenges I received after my previous video refer to this verse as proof that we should worship on Sundays. Both those who observe Sunday as their main day of worship and those refuting my arguments from the previous video often point to it. They associate this verse with Jesus' resurrection on the first day of the week and the tradition of the Apostles gathering on Sundays to honor Christ's resurrection. Ok, so while it is true that Sunday was eventually adopted as the Lord's Day, this transition took place about a century after Jesus. During that period, some Christians moved away from Sabbath observance, seeking to distance themselves from Jewish customs, because they didn't like each other very much. John, who wrote the book of Revelation, was Jewish and always followed the Sabbath, which is Saturday. We know Jesus, who called himself the Lord of the Sabbath in Luke 6 5, followed it too all his life. So, when John wrote the Lord's Day, he meant Saturday, not Sunday. John's choice to use the Lord's Day once, instead of his usual term Sabbath, is not evidence that the Lord's Day somehow changed to mean Sunday. There's no biblical support for the idea of the Lord's Day being Sunday, and John never uses this term again in the Bible. He consistently refers to the Sabbath as Saturday. When things are unclear in any of the Bible's books and passages, it is important to examine other parts for clarity. Nonetheless, there is no additional mention of the Lord's Day elsewhere in Scripture, and, therefore, it is reasonable to conclude that John intended Saturday. After all that, I'm still open to reconsider if you can present a verse or passage that suggests otherwise. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The Colossians 2, 16-17 suggests that the Sabbath can be observed on any day of one's choosing. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Some of my online viewers and friends have argued that this passage suggests we have the freedom to choose any day for observance, pointing to the Apostle Paul's statement, let no man therefore judge you. Colossians 2, 16, 17 talks about not letting others judge you for what you eat, drink or what you celebrate on which days. And that is it. As simple as that. Some people use these verses to argue against keeping the Sabbath. But if we take a closer look, we will see that it is about something else. It is about the sacrifices made during those special days. Paul is telling us that these rituals are just distractions trying to obscure something much larger. Jesus' sacrifice. He mentions the body of Christ, which means Jesus' actual body not just a symbol. This fits with Paul's other writings about Jesus' physical life and death. It shows us that the sacrifices in the temple were signs pointing to Jesus' ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Paul also refers to Old Testament passages that talk about the importance of sacrifices during festivals and sabbaths. This supports the idea that he is talking about sacrifices not just the celebrations themselves. The phrase food or drink also fits with this idea because offerings of food and drink were part of the temple's rituals. This is backed up by other biblical passages that mention such offerings. Another Bible passage on Hebrews 10, 1-10 follows the same theme. It states that the sacrifices in the Old Testament were like shadows of Jesus' sacrifice. This supports the idea that Colossians 2, 16-17 is talking about sacrifices not just special days. 
Understanding the background helps. The Colossians were likely facing pressure to keep following the Jewish rituals, including offering sacrifices in the temple. But Paul told them that Jesus' sacrifice was enough. They did not need to keep those rituals because Jesus fulfilled all their sacrifices. So, Colossians 2, 16, 17 does not change rules about keeping the Sabbath or other festivals. Instead, it talks about how the old way of sacrificing animals is no longer needed after what Jesus did. Paul wanted to make sure believers understood that they were free from following all the old ceremonial laws. With that, he encourages us to focus on Jesus and his salvation plan for us. How do you explain Romans 6.14? Romans 6.14 states, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Once again, many of my friends and online viewers say that, according to this verse, we are no longer under the law, but under God's grace. They believe this means the Ten Commandments, including keeping the Sabbath day, were ended when Jesus was crucified. Well, the Ten Commandments and ceremonial laws are two different things. This is something people need to understand. You might think the Ten Commandments were done away at the cross, but if you really think about it, does that make any sense? In the New Testament, teachings from Jesus and the Apostles make it clear that some ancient laws from Israel, like those about marriage, divorce, punishment and circumcision aren't required for Christians today. Despite that, some health-related laws from back then are still important. In addition to civil and health laws, there were also ceremonial and moral laws in ancient Israel. Ceremonial laws were about how to worship, including sacrifices and feasts. These laws pointed to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. When Jesus died, these laws came to an end, a symbolic moment marked by the tearing of the temple veil. Like I explained before, Paul talked about these laws in Colossians 2, 16, 17. If you read the full chapter, in verse 14, he calls them handwriting of ordinances, meaning the ceremonial laws. These laws, like what to eat, drink, and when to celebrate, were a shadow of Jesus' sacrifice. They ended when Jesus died. Some people think Colossians 2, 16, 17 means we don't have to follow any laws, like the Sabbath, but they are mistaken. Paul was talking about ceremonial laws, not moral laws like the ones detailed by the Ten Commandments. He wanted people to understand that Jesus' sacrifice changed things, but it didn't mean we were free to ignore God's moral laws. When Paul said in Romans 6, 14 that we were not under the law, he meant we were not condemned by it because of Jesus' sacrifice. He did not mean we can break God's commandments. Even though Paul used similar thoughts in other verses, like verse 15, he explain that being not under the law does not mean we can sin. It means we have been forgiven and empowered to live righteously. Most Christians agree they shouldn't swear, kill, steal or lie. In short, they agree that they should follow the commandments. Seventh-day Adventists agree, but maintain that we must also observe the fourth commandment and keep the Sabbath. If keeping all ten commandments means being under the law, then most Christians are almost under the law by following nine of them. But do you really think almost following the law is good enough? Would you almost connect your phone charger and expect it to be charged? Probably not, but do let me know. On that note, I think that's all for today. I hope I have helped you understand the Bible a little better and that this motivates you to open your Bible again and think about the verses we discussed in a new light. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to support my channel, please consider subscribing as this will help me share the good message with more people. Much love. See you in the next one.